Hello guys, Solitaire Gamer here, and today I'll be reviewing the second season of Overlord. This season focused on Ayn's quest to dominate the world as he started to take over some areas in the world. He also managed to improve his reputation as an adventurer to the entire world. Everyone in the world learned just how powerful Momon was this season. Despite Ayn starting to take over the world and improving his reputation as an adventurer, there was not a lot of focus on him this season. Instead, the focus was on members within Nazariku and other side characters. Sabus, Quarkutus, the Lizard People, Unglaus, and Climb got much more screen time and development as characters. There was a very mixed reaction to this because in Season 1, Ainz got so much screen time right from the start, and this season, he barely gets any screen time until near the end of the season. I thought the world building and character development for characters other than Ainz was important. It makes this fantasy world even more intriguing. If the Lizard People didn't get much screen time or character development, then it would just be a boring arc of Ainz and his guild taking over the lizard people easily. Who wants to see that? By giving us a viewpoint of the lizard people, we were able to see their struggles and determination to stay alive. That made the fight they had against Ayn Sands Guild even more emotional because they really wanted to survive no matter what. As viewers, we had gotten so used to the lizard people and liked them as characters, so to see them die one after another was sad. I was glad this anime focused on the lizard people for several episodes because without that much screen time, I wouldn't have felt anything for them when many of them started to die. The Lizard Man arc even gave Corcutus lots of character development because it made him think for himself and not just rely on Ainz. I'm glad other characters besides Ainz got more character development because the show can't succeed if it just focuses on one character. Otherwise, it would be frustrating to see other characters just be useless. Sabus was another character within Ainz's guild to get character development. His character development, though, wasn't just to make decisions on his own, but to care for others that aren't within his guild. Before this, he didn't really seem fond of humans and just protected the weak because the person who made him taught him to do so. But during an arc where he got lots of screen time, he learned to protect and care about Human Girl. It was nice to see that characters within Nazarek have a kind side to themselves as well. I love how Unglaus and Klein developed as important characters later in the show because they showed that despite how weaker humans are than other races, with determination, humans can break through their limits as well and protect themselves. This show had a message of never give up despite how dreadful a situation may be. I'm glad the humans actually showed the ability to get stronger because if they didn't get stronger, then what is the point of giving them so much screen time? It would be anticlimactic to show them training for a while, only to get beaten badly by opponents later. It was entertaining seeing Ainz act as a ruler and conquer people. He took over lizard people and gave them conditions to follow if they wanted to live. I really did like the fact that Ainz was a reasonable ruler. He was not naive to think he could conquer other people's lands without killing anyone, but he wasn't a cruel ruler either and didn't just kill everyone. The plan he and his Dark Guild came up with in order to spread the word about Mamon was ingenious. Because of that plan, they were able to steal resources from humans and made Ayn's goal of dominating the world one step closer. The fights this season were as good as last season because we got to see Demirgis, Cocutus, and Sabus show off their fighting skills. They were so cool to watch. Also, the humans and other side characters were entertaining to watch as well because although they might not be as strong as Ainz and his Dark Guild, their desire to win and survive was entertaining to watch. It was disappointing that Ainz wasn't in a serious fight this season, but it was entertaining seeing him pick a fight with Demir Irgis. The opening to the season was not as good as the opening to season 1, but it was still okay. The ending was alright. The music during the episodes was decent, but no songs really stood out. The animation style was the same as season 1, which is good, and the animation during the fights looked great. I do recommend watching season 2 if you already watched season 1, because in this season, Many characters got great character development, which gives us a reason to care about them. It also shows Ainz starting to take over more land in the world and guiding people as its new ruler. I like the world building in this season because I want to know more about the world outside of Nazarek, and the season delivered on that. I give the season a 8 out of 10. So that's all I want to talk about for today. Thank you for watching this video. Have a great day or night wherever you are, and please like and subscribe if you enjoy the video, and please comment if you found anything interesting in the video.